In this episode, we will explore some of the best of Blazorplate's capabilities that enable the system admins to administer users' accounts using the permission-based authorization approach. The permission-based authorization approach is the replacement of the role-based authorization as Blazorplate introduces permissions at the role level or user level so that only specific roles and users can access the protected resources. Now I'm going to sign into the system as an administrator to show you how to manage users and their privileges within the system. First, I'm going to go to the roles list to add a new role. I'm going to call it Staff Sergeant and assign some permissions to it from the Permissions tab. Before selecting the permissions, let's look at the tree component to understand how it works. This component is used to retrieve a multi-level tree data structure. As you can see, I can click on any parent node to view its descendant nodes without latency as all nodes and their children were fetched from the server at once during the component initialization. Loading a hierarchical data structure all at once is suitable for a small and mid-sized data hierarchy that takes a little time to load. I can use the Load On Demand option to load a large data hierarchy. This option allows fast rendering by requesting the minimum amount of data to be retrieved from the server so that the user can see the result in the tree and interact with the visible data as quickly as possible. Initially, only the root parents nodes are retrieved and rendered, only after I expand a parent node, I will receive the descendant nodes for that particular parent. Loading on-demand functionality allows for caching the descendant nodes when they are initially requested from the server. If you re-expand a parent node, it will fetch the descendant nodes from the local storage. This approach significantly reduces the time required to load the child nodes and the amount of data being transferred between the browser and the server. This component can be easily configured to work with any remote data. Now I'm going to grant this role all permissions needed to perform all functions available in the applicants module, except for creating applicants permission. The applicants module is one of Blazorplate's proof of concepts that you can use to examine many features. I will explore those proof of concepts later in this series. Now I'm going to save this role. Note that the newly created roles do not have to be hard-coded within the source code. Roles in the Blazorplate development environment are no longer static to the code and they can be easily modified, added, and deleted at runtime. Dealing with roles at runtime requires devising a new mechanism to authorize users dynamically and this is where the dynamic authorization approach in Blazorplate comes in. I will explore this innovative approach more thoroughly later in this series. As I'm already assigned to the admin role and permitted to create new user accounts on behalf of other users, I'm going to go to the users list to add a new user and assign a role to that user. From the roles tab, I'm going to assign the sergeant role to the user that I'm creating. This pop-up contains a data grid with server-side filtering and pagination and allows for selecting or deselecting roles. As I'm creating a new user account, I want to point out that Blazorplate has a multiple file upload component that allows us to upload an unlimited number of files. Also, it allows the developers to specify the allowed file extensions, maximum file size, and the minimum and the maximum number of files that a user can upload. Now I'm going to save this user. As we can see, our new user, Emerson Burton, has been successfully created. I can click on the Permissions button to view his permissions. As we can see, Emerson Burton has been granted all permissions except for Create Applicant Permission. Those permissions were granted to him indirectly, which means they are inherited from the Sergeant role, the role that I've just assigned to him. Blazorplate also allows me to revoke any of these permissions from Emerson Burton and grant new extra permissions to him directly without the need to edit the current role or create a new one. Now I'm going to log out, then log back into my tenant portal as Emerson Burton to force the authentication server to refresh the access token. Let's view some information related to Emerson's access token using the token decoder tool that can be accessed from the authorization menu in the proof of concept section. This tool allows me to view the decoded version of the current access token. From the Claims tab, I can view the Claims List payload, which came as a part of the current access token. A claim is a name-value pair, representing what the subject is, not what the subject can do. For example, you may have a driving license issued by a local driving license authority. Your driving license has your date of birth on it. 
In this case, the claim name would be date of birth, and the claim value would be your date of birth, for example, June 4, 1990. Other examples of a claim would be the email address, profile picture path, full name, job title, and expiry date. The expiry date signifies the end of the access token lifespan. I will explain in more detail how to specify the validity period of the access token and how to refresh it just before it reaches its end of life later in this series. Let's check the role claim assigned to Emerson Burton, he should be assigned to the sergeant role. Now let's go to the permissions tab to check what he can do. As we can see, he is allowed to perform all tasks in the applicants module except for creating an applicant. In the next episode, I will use the applicants module to show you how Blazerplate detects unauthorized users with insufficient permissions who try to access restricted resources within the system. Thank you for watching.